Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Pickering and today I'll be talking to you about modeling optics with realistic edge apertures. This is a new feature that will be available with the upcoming Optic Studio 16 and um, this new feature will be called Optomechanical Semi-Diameters will provide you with greater flexibility with generating optomechanical features outside the clear aperture of the lens. Um, with this we can accurately represent how the final lens will be made. And you can see this here at this cut through uh, a lens system where you can see the, um, the areas of the lens which are, for, which are used for mounting. And we can now make lenses that represent um, this extra material. This new feature has an impact across the entire software. Um, first of all, of course, in the lens data editor, and I will show you how we enter these new zones. Then I can show you um, how the new lenses, how these lenses are then converted into non-sequential mode, and also how you can make um, manufacturable manufacturing drawings um, using the ISO um, drawings tool. Quickly talk about how we convert the new lenses into CAD. We have new operands for the multi-configuration editor, and these are used when making a lens thermal. Um, we also have new operands for the multi for the uh, merit function editor, and also we have added functionality for our scripting language CPL and our new programmable interface. And finally, I'll talk a little bit how uh, the tolerancing procedure is affected with these new optomechanical semi-diameters. And then I will talk about availability um, and how you know this looks for the different versions. And um, at the end, following this webinar, you will have the opportunity to ask me questions and I'll do my best to answer them. So when you first open Optic Studio 16, the first thing you will see are the two new parameter columns. One's called the chip zone and one's called the mechanical semi-diameter. The chip zone extends the non-traceable semi-diameter, and it simply continues the current SAC surface of the surface, the SAC curve of the surface. So it's here, this is the chip zone here. And then the mechanical semi-diameter adds a non-traceable unique structure to the surface, and it extends the semi-diameter with a flat surface. So this up here is the flat area called the mechanical semi-diameter. Let me just quickly show how we can make this. Yeah, so I've got this simple biconcave lens um, now made in my lens data editor, and I want to add a two millimeter chip zone on both surfaces, so surface three and surface two, and I update my 3D layout, and I get this extension of my SAC curve, and then finally, I want to make a flat extension, so make it a total of 15, and then again, if I update my 3D layout, I get this flat extension area. I'm showing you only standard surfaces, but um, also all rotation symmetric surfaces are supported. And um, yeah. the rays, they will only be allowed to trace through the clear aperture defined by the semi-diameter. Obviously, any additional apertures will restrict the light further. However, no rays will be traced, will be traceable through the chip zone or the mechanical semi-diameter region, only through the clear semi-diameter. There are several solve types for, the, for both the mechanical semi-diameter and the chip zone. If you choose to have the mechanical semi-diameter to be automatically solved, then the value will simply be the semi-diameter plus the chip zone. However, if that surface is part of a lens and the edge drawing option is set to square, then the mechanical semi-diameter is extended to provide the square edge explicitly. So let me show you what that means. For surface number two, the properties are, let me just start on a little bit, the properties for drawing are squared to next surface. So when I remove the automatic, when, when I make both surface two and surface three automatic, it falls back to 10.4 plus 2, it gives 12.4. Now make this surface 3, 15. And as soon as I make surface 3, 15, also surface 2, 
um, is now calculated to be 15 millimeters. The chip zone has a similar functionality as um, a semi diameter margin. Um, the global semi diameter margins are still can still be used. They can still be found in the aperture setting of the system explorer. However, you can also turn them off individually. So currently, I have my surface number two has a semi diameter of ten. I'm going to add one millimeter of semi diameter margin then that tops it up to be 11. But now I can turn this off for this particular surface by simply tack, ticking that disable semi-diameter margins box and it falls back to being 10 millimeters. Okay, let me just set this back. I'll take. The Optomechanical semi-diameters are built upon the clear semi-diameters. However, once you set a, a circular aperture for a surface, then that's not longer relevant. Then the chip zone and the mechanical semi-diameter are built upon the circular aperture. So where I to set, so I'm gonna take this mechanical semi-diameter, set it back to automatic, same for this one here. So again, whoops, sorry. So falls back to 10.4 plus two gives 12.4. Now I'm gonna set surface number three to have a circular aperture. Yeah, it sets it automatically to 10.4. And now I can set the value to whatever I like and it will not change the value for the mechanical semi diameter because the chip zone is built on the circular aperture. So if I change this to 11, then this value changes. Okay, let me take this back. So you go back to your original one. Back to our original lens. So now that we have such a realistic um, lens, we want to export it into manufacturable design drawings. And we can do this by taking our lens and then going to tolerance. And here we have the ISO element drawing tool. By clicking this, I'm gonna drag this out so you can see it a bit better. I want to make my surface too show it as a singlet and I click OK. I can see now that we have the clear apertures on both sides. Um, obviously now it's it's not a semi diameter, it's a diameter, but the clear diameter is now 20 on surface two and the clear diameter plus the chip zone is 24 and then the mechanical diameter is 30. So in this way, you can make a realistic ISO drawing of your lens. Close this again. We can also export this new structure into CAD, um, into whatever format you would like, uh, in the IGES, STEP, SAT or STL format. Um, you would do this in the same way as you did before um, on the file. And we have this export to CAD files tool. And you can simply select your surfaces, surface two to surface three, and your file type, and it will export the entire structure, including the new chip and the new chip zone and the mechanical semi diameter. We can also convert this new um, extension or the new zone into the sequential mode. So standard surfaces can be converted into non-sequential standard objects, uh, into non-sequential standard lens objects. And the value for um, the clear parameters, so clear one for phase one, clear two for phase two, will simply be the respective um, semi-diameter plus the chip zone. 
and then the values for h1 and h2 will simply be the mechanical semi diameter of either surface. So again, let me just show you. We click come here to convert to NSC group. Let's not save this one. And we want to only convert surface two to surface three. We're gonna ignore all this and convert the entire file and click OK. And you can see again, we have on phase one, we have clear 10 plus chip zone two gives me 12 millimeters. And then mechanical, we had 15 millimeters. And on the outgoing phase, we had 10.4 plus two gives me 12.4 and again, 15 millimeters. And I can show this object with the object viewer. And here I've got my sag. So my, my curvature, clear plus chip zone as phase number one. And again, outgoing is the same, phase number two, clear plus, um, so clear plus chip zone, which is the clear two. And then the mechanical part, semi-diameter, um, um, is now um, part of phase zero, which is the side wall or side um, boundary of this lens. So you can um, apply different um, finishes um, of the glass for either zone. Okay. Let me go back to my original biconcave lens. And again, add a chip zone and the mechanical semi diameter for both surfaces. Because we have these two, these two new parameters, um, we also have two new operands for the multi-configuration editor. One is called CHZN, so for the gypsum, and one is MCSD for the mechanical semi-diameter. Um, when, you, when you use the make thermal tool to um, look at your lens at different temperatures or pressures, then the chip zone and the MCSD um, operand are added just as the SDIA um, operand would have been added or is added. Um, so you have two new operands for each air glass and glass glass boundary. So let me show you how this works. So like you would do before on the setup, there is this make thermal tool. You would click it and let's say we want to have two more configurations, one at minus 40, one at 100 temp, um, degrees, and click OK. And we want to have one at 20. Then you see now that we have for both boundaries, as so glass, air, and air glass, we have two operands, one chip zone, one MCSD, and again here, one chip zone, one MCSD, and both have, um, because they're made of um, the body is made of glass. It's now being expanded and contracted according to whatever temperature and pressure there is. There's also three new operands for the merit function editor. One that simply reports um, the value, which is called OMSD for optomechanical semi-diameters. That simply reports the value for uh, the specified surface. And then we've got OMMI and OMMX. Um, these are optomechanical minimum and optomechanical maximum. They constrain the mechanical semi-diameters to be larger or smaller than a specified target. And with this, you can control multiple surfaces simultaneously. Um, all edge thickness operands that are already existing, so for example, um, edge thickness value or maximum edge thickness glass and all the other ones, they account for the new zones. So um, they are, they have been, their functionality has been extended that they now see the additional um, um, glass zones. The functionality of ZPL has been um, updated. So like now the, the, the keyword set surface property 
um, can now also change the parameter values for chip zone and mechanical semidiameter. The two numerical functions, CHZN and MCSD, report the parameter value of, a, of the specified surface. And the two um, um, functions, um, OCOL and OPEF, have been updated, so they can now also take care of the new merit function operands. In, our program, in a new programmable interface, um, the source API, there was new properties been added to the LDE row interface, so we can get the result. We can get and set the value and the cell properties of the chips on and the mechanical semidiameter. And also, there's been a, there's a boolean added where you can turn the this tick box for the um, semidiameter margins on and off. That the surface surface specific one. I told you that all rotationally symmetric surfaces are supported, but on top of that, also irregular and CERNIC standard SAC surfaces supported um, for optomechanical semidiameters. Um, this means that when you tolerance surface irregularities using the TIRR or the TESI operand, or you want to tolerance surface decenters or surface tilt, for example, using the TIRY operand. That means for both for all of these operations, the OMSD values are carried forward and won't be lost. It needs to be noted that the TIRY, so the total indicator RONOS, is measured on the clear aperture and not at the edge of the at the physical edge of the lens. And the same is for the TESI operand, the normalization of the Zernike polynomials is done on the clear aperture. This new feature is available in professional and premium versions only. If you open Optic Studio in standard, then the chip zone and the mechanical semi-diameter is grayed out. If you open a file that has these values included, you will not be able to see them. And if you open a file that has that used this, the new operands in the merit function, for example, then you will get an error message saying these new operands are not supported and they will be removed from the merit function editor. Thank you very much for listening and now available to answer any questions. You can submit them via the text box on the go to webinar control panel. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing your questions. Thank you very much.